three. Hey, welcome back to Foil Labs. It's become a social event today. This is part three of um, three three movies, and this is about trimming back um, our carbon for our carbon nose, making sure it's all cut back nicely and trimmed up. But before we do that, Foil Labs has become a little bit of a social occasion, and here's three of the people that have come down and visited me. And there's another one behind who's pretty shy. But um, <laughs> here we got Thomas Crook over on the right, and Dan. Not sure who Dan is. He's just turned up. <laughs> and uh, Brianna, and these guys are all part of the New Zealand windfoil um, community. So they come and hang out here and we, it's part of, part of what we do and we share ideas. So this is part three. So if you just come in close and, um, so this is, this is a list of the material that we've used to complete this, um, this fix. So we've got a 200 gram 12 carbon, that's this material here. We've got some peel ply, which is this material here, which you can purchase from any fiberglass or resin shop. We've got um, masking tape and double-sided sailmakers tape. This is this double-sided tape is a lot thicker and a lot stronger than normal double-sided tape that you buy from a shop. So um, this is what sailmakers use to stick panels and sails together. It's extremely sticky and. Um, you know, in this case, we found a different application for it where it's enabled us to um, stick our, our cloth and hold it to a, a non-skid surface, which has been quite difficult to stick to. So also we've got our wet system uh, epoxy resin. In some countries you have hard, um, winter hardener and summer hardener. So this is, um, uh, this is a summer hardener. Um, and the pumps come already pre um, ratioed for uh, resin to harden a mix. Um, we've got a small paint roller and a tray and also an Angora Mohair enamel. This is an enamel based roller so not a water based and it's nice and fine to give a nice surface. So that, these are the materials that you can buy from your hardware shop. Really good nice sharp blades and yes I don't have it in a handle. I actually like to use these blades in, independently in my hand. There's a risk to it, and yes, I have cut myself, but um, it's nice to be able to hold the blade and trim it around and move it and twist it, so that's why I use these. And 100 grit um, Norton sandpaper. So what we've done here, I'm just going to swap over. We've got, <clears throat> this is, um, I've started to trim off the bottom, and I'm slowly just using the blade to focus in on this, on the chine. I'm peeling off the tape, peeling back. Being a nice sharp blade, it's nice and accurate. And then I can peel back the original double-sided tape. So in a sense, what you're doing is sort of sneaking up on this a little bit. But you get the idea, and if you were, if I get my cameraman just to focus down on this part here, you can see, start to see that we've got a nice cut line on the chine, and I'll finish that off with a nice little bit of sandpaper um, to bring me up with a nice, a nice edge. And on the top, what we have done is we've taken off all of the the um, excess, and here's our double-sided tape that was our original, um, pinpointed our original cut line and we've used this back edge to guide another layer of double sided tape to pinpoint now my cut line to trim all this down and you can see here I've already done that so effectively I could pick up this double sided tape now and gradually peel this back so what we're looking for without going through the whole nose as a nice clean cut edge and um, I will finish this very very uh, lightly with some very fine sandpaper and then the very last thing that we'll do is pull the peel ply off to reveal a nice clean nice surface so without creating a video that's too long for you uh, this being part three gives you an idea of of how we identify the original cut lines, 
the materials that we use and um, how we just keep it all and make it look nice and smart. So, you like that, Ollie? <laughs> cool. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye.